Oh, no word yet on the Singaporean crew member and his crewmates on board the Success 9 oil tanker. It's been nearly 48 hours since unidentified persons boarded the Singapore registered vessel in the Gulf of Guinea in what's widely reported as a possible hijacking. The Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore has been working with ship owner Hai Soon Group and other authorities to monitor the situation and assist where needed. The possible hijacking took place some 555 kilometres off the Ivory Coast on Monday. There were 20 crew members on board, including the Singaporean. The Gulf of Guinea is known as a hotspot for piracy and other instances of maritime crime, such as oil, bunkering and theft. In 2021, a Singapore-registered container ship was attacked twice near the Nigerian city of Port Harcourt. Now, and for more, we're joined by Giuseppe Trezino, CEO of Presidium International. That's a security and risk consultancy firm. Uh, Giuseppe, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, let's talk about the classification of this case. Authorities have yet to classify it officially. Instead, they've, they've called it you know, a boarding by quote-unquote unidentified persons. How do authorities make a distinction when they're confronted with you know, some preliminary data on these cases? Good evening, everybody. Uh, at, at this stage, it's a bit difficult to understand uh, how to classify the incident uh, because of the lack of, uh, of information that we're, uh, that we're having. Um, we have a definition of, uh, of what is piracy uh, from the UNCLOS. But uh, in this case, I think that the, the most uh, um, crucial aspect is to understand if this is indeed a, a kidnapping, an attack, a final at kidnapping the, the crew or if it's uh, a hijacking of the vessel finalized at oil theft. Um, as of now, it's still difficult to understand because we're within a time frame of 48 hours where the vessel has, uh, we have lost contact with the vessel that is not uh, yet indicating whether or not um, what type of event we're looking at. Mr. Trezino, uh in the absence of formal classification, and as you mentioned, in the absence of any uh, substantial detail and data, what do you foresee, what do you expect, given what we do know could happen in terms of negotiation, in terms of managing the situation in the hours, in the days ahead? Uh, as of now, the information that is circulating is that there are several crew that have been kidnapped. Uh, this. Um, sources are unconfirmed uh, at this stage. Uh, if indeed uh, people have get um, have gotten kidnapped, there will be an investigation by local authorities. Um, once the vessel uh, gets back to a safe port, uh, the flag state and uh, all parties, um, um, including uh, KNR company and uh, and the ship owners, uh, there will be negotiations. There will be uh, the payment of a, of a ransom if this is the case. And uh, typically, these uh, events will be resolved between 20, 45 days. That's the, the tense time span uh, crews get um, held in these circumstances. Now, I just want to get your thoughts on you know, the area uh, where the tanker was boarded. We're talking about 550 kilometers off the Ivory Coast, the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, what's the piracy situation there like? The, the distance from shore is uh, pretty interesting. Um, it's very far from shore, so we can uh, expect the support of uh, a bigger vessel uh, to launch the operation. Uh, we believe that this uh, attacks, uh, when it comes to vessels that are involved in uh, oil bunkering offshore, are uh, often intelligence-based um, led. Uh, we, we, we see the, um, the Success 9, we had the B Ocean that was attacked twice uh, in 2022. Most recently, the Monjasa Reformer of Congo was attacked. Uh, they all share some similarities uh, when it comes to the type of vessel and the type of operation they were carrying uh, out. Uh, the distance is very interesting uh, because we've seen um, a progression of the um, of the attacks further and further uh, deeper offshore. Uh, we look at 2016, 2017, where attacks were uh, occurring uh, 40, 20 nautical miles off um, of Delta State, Bonnie River in Nigeria. 
And today we have attacks at over 300 nautical miles uh, from shore. Um, why is that? Um, probably uh, on, on, on the one side, we have the improvement of the capabilities of like the private industry with the security escort vessels within the Nigerian EEZ that has pushed uh, the pirates to operate outside the EEZs where it is very difficult to provide security in those areas. Uh, the presence of uh, foreign navies that have been patrolling uh, the area and mostly within um, the boundaries of the EEZs of all the states of the Gulf of Guinea. So we see um, the parallel action groups from Nigeria, which are quickly adapting to changing scenarios and um, showing, demonstrating their capability to perform um, sophisticated attacks uh, deeply offshore. Oh, Mr. Trisino, you're mapping the different attacks across the last few years. If you look at the trend in the figures, so the ICC International Maritime Bureau has released figures suggesting that last year, in fact, there were fewer cases compared to the year before that. That's 2021. Uh, this case we're looking at right now, it's an isolated one for now. But do you see any trend in this, any picking up in figures? And if that should be the case, what might be the reasons for that? The, um, there has been a trend, uh, the uh, sending trend in uh, piracy attacks uh, over the last couple of years, uh, basically since the end of 2021, uh, mid 2021, I would say. Um, this has been caused by several factors, uh, mainly uh, what has been going on uh, on the ground in Nigeria, where uh, we've had um, uh, different cases of like uh, clashes between uh, militant groups. Uh, political situation, um, the, the the approach of the national elections, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, also, of course, also the increase in oil price and increase in um, illegal oil bunkering, uh, illegal um, oil operations on uh, on land. This has, this have all been uh, factors that have like, um, say, shifted the attention of the pirate action groups um, from, uh, from operating offshore. Um, recently, we have seen um, an increase in attacks on the um, on the eastern side uh, of the Gulf of Guinea, so uh, across Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, and Gabon. Um, we started seeing some uh, attacks against local crafts, lo uh, local passenger vessels, or uh, um, local flag vessel operating uh, all operating locally, and from there uh, we've started to see. Uh, in um, some isolated uh, cases, like the B Ocean in early 22, uh, when we had like um, the first um, uh, petro piracy incident uh, since uh, quite some years. Uh, then again, the B Ocean, same sim uh, similar circumstances again, oil theft, Montasa Reform which is still under uh, investigation, uh, where it is suspected that there was uh, oil theft. Um, all this uh, indicates that um, there is a possibility that the, the so-called petro piracy might uh, have a comeback uh, in the upcoming months, in the upcoming years. Well, thanks so much for that, helping us make sense of uh, from what little data we have right now. There was uh, Giuseppe Trizzino, CEO of Presidium International, a security and risk consultancy firm. Thank you.